Welcome to this lecture, where I will discuss the general principles of Eurocode 8. Eurocode 8 is a European code for the design of structures for earthquake resistance. I will point out the main similarities and differences between Eurocode 8 and the Dutch precursor to its national annex to Eurocode 8, which is NPR 9998-2015. Eurocode 8 consists of six parts. Parts 1, 3 and 5 are applicable to new and existing buildings. These three parts are covered by the NPR for induced seismicity in the Groningen region of the Netherlands. The NPR has many similarities to the Eurocode 8 principles with additional specific information related to local construction conditions. This lecture focuses on Eurocode 8 Part 1, which is for new buildings, as well as Eurocode 8 Part 3, which is for the seismic assessment and structural upgrading of existing buildings to earthquake loads. This will be done with reference to the NPR, so as to point out similarities as well as differences between the Eurocode and the NPR. Eurocode 8 Part 1 provides the general rules, seismic actions and rules for buildings. Seismic hazard maps for use with Eurocode 8 are meant to be provided by individual nations. The NPR provides a seismic hazard map for the Groningen region of the Netherlands only. This map is based on a 475-year return period earthquake event, which has a 90% chance of not being exceeded in 50 years, or a 10% chance of being exceeded in 50 years. The Groningen region seismic hazard map is still under development and although an update of the seismic hazard map is provided by KNMI, this has not yet been incorporated in the current NPR. Eurocode 8 Part 1 provides five basic seismic ground types, A to E, for which tabulated parameters are provided for these ground types to assist the derivation of the elastic surface spectra. Eurocode 8 requires special investigations for site classes S1 and S2. In the graph, you can see the spectra given in Eurocode 8 for ground types A to E. The NPR provides one horizontal spectrum for normal site conditions, which is only valid if four specified conditions defined in the NPR are met. For special site conditions, the NPR currently offers the engineer the choice of using a site-specific method to determine the surface spectra or to multiply the normal site condition spectra by 1.5. This graph shows the surface spectra for normal and special site conditions according to the NPR. Similar to Eurocode 8, the NPR also defines the vertical spectra for the engineer. Seismic codes typically point the engineer to an appropriate analysis method for a given seismic assessment. In this table, we can see that Eurocode 8 Part 1 and the NPR are identical in the guidance they give to the engineer. Both Eurocode 8 Part 1 and the NPR have similar constraints as to when and how the different analysis methods are used. Eurocode 8 Part 1 and the NPR provide same direction on when full spatial 3D analysis models are required. The table shown here provides such guidance on how regularities or irregularities impose restrictions on the engineer in terms of the spatial requirements for a model, whether lateral force methods are allowed, as well as guidance on the building behavior factor that could be adopted for linear elastic analysis methods. The behavior factor Q, also known as the response modification factor, allows for linear elastic analysis methods to be used to assess and or structurally upgrade an existing